Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. This is going to be the smoothest ride to Hooterville you ever had. You mean we aren't taking the cannonball? <laughs> <laughs> what took you so long, Kate? I was finishing up my shopping list. Kate, we got a schedule to maintain. Well, so have I. Supper schedule. Which do you want to maintain? Chicken and dumplings? And blueberry pie? <laughs> oh, I got to get this thing fixed. It keeps running fast, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, you were right. That was a smooth ride. Like sailing on a pink cloud. Well, thanks for the kind words, Kate. You figure to get your shopping done by the time we get this pink cloud turned around? Well, I should say, I can't wait to get aboard. Hey, look. Bedlow fellow from the main line of the railroad. Sure is. And that can mean only one thing, trouble. Come on. Morning, Mr. Bedlow. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Bradley. Lovely morning, isn't it? Uh, dandy. What brings you to Hooterville, Mr. Bedlow? Nothing wrong, I hope. Wrong? What could be wrong? Nothing could be more right. Mr. Bedlow, I hate to say this, it sounds like you'd thought up another way to scrap the cannonball. Scrap the cannonball? Why, I wouldn't think of scrapping that lovely little train. Oh, you really mean that? Unequivocally, Mrs. Bradley. Oh, I'll admit in the past, I wanted to derail it, junk it, melt it down for paperweights, get rid of it any way that I could. But not anymore. Those days are completely forgotten. Sure enough. In my efforts to shut down this branch line, I have suffered humiliation and embarrassment, and my standing as vice president of the CNFW Railroad is, has been in jeopardy time and again. But those days are also forgotten. Well, Mr. Bedlow, that's great news. It sure is. But getting back to what I asked you a while ago, what brings you to Hooterville? Oh, well, I'm meeting Mr. Philip Waterhouse here. He's a retired railroad tycoon. His hobby is old trains. He plays with them in his thousand-acre backyard in California. <laughs> he plays with trains? You mean Precisely, that... Mrs. Bradley. I am selling him the Hooterville Cannonball. Oh, no, Mr. Bedlow, you can't. Oh, but I can, Mrs. Bradley. Mr. Waterhouse is going to pay a small fortune for it. Turns out that the Hooterville Cannonball is an 1891 Rogers, the last one of its kind left in the world. And you know who turned up this little fact? You know what you are, Mr. Bedlow? Yes, a uh, heel, a fink, a no-good stinker, a dirty rat. Take your pick. I think dirty rat fits you best. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, the people in this community can't get along without the cannibal. You know that. That's true, Mrs. Bradley, but this is progress. Something you've held up for years. Why don't we talk about this over a nice hot meal at my place? <laughs> oh, no, you don't, Mrs. Bradley. You've tricked me for the last time. That train is finished. You're finished. Everybody's finished. Who is uh, Mr. Bedlow? Certainly not me. <laughs> I'm Bedlow. I'm Mr. Cassidy, Mr. Waterhouse's secretary. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Waterhouse? I'm Homer Bedlow. Mr. Waterhouse says, how do you do? <laughs> Well, why are we wasting time? I could be having my breakfast. Oh, yes, sir. Oh. 
Now, let's see what's on your diet this morning, sir. Probably nails. Uh, dried figs, sir. I don't like that woman's looks. Tell her to get about her business. Tell her to get about her business. Tell her to get about her business. Uh, now, just a minute. In Hooterville, we don't ricochet our conversations off of one another. We take direct aim at the person we're talking to. Besides, anything that happens to the cannonball happens to be our business. What are they yammering about? Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Who's worried? Who's worried? I am. I think we could save some time if Mr. Waterhouse would sign this purchase order right now. Mr. Waterhouse does not buy pigs and pokes. He'll sign the order when he's certain that the engine is a genuine 1891 Rogers. And after he's had a trial run to check the condition of the train. Fine, fine. I'm sure that Mr. Waterhouse will take into consideration that the train is old. And old trains, like old people, are bound to be a little creaky. Oh, no offense intended. <laughs> this would be the one day I got the cannonball running smooth as silk. Well, Charlie, you got to make a sow's ear out of a silk train. <laughs> Mr. Waterhouse is ready for the trial run. Smokes! Pat, we're taking her out in a trial run. Well, Charlie, I guess you'll be dropping me off at the Shady Rest for the last time. I reckon so, Kate. I'll dust off the seat in the coach for you and Mr. Waterhouse. <laughs> it's a good thing Mr. Waterhouse has Mr. Bedlow along to point out the features of the cannonball. Yeah, when it comes to trains, it takes an experienced man like Mr. Bedlow to know the score. Kate, I don't want to see the cannonball sold any more than you do, but my pride's at stake. I got her purring like a kitten. Well, she better start spitting like a wildcat, or we're going to start eating like pigeons. <laughs> You're right, Kate. <laughs> I've got the seat all cleaned off for you, Mr. Waterhouse, all set to get aboard. Uh, Mr. Bedlow, I don't see why you feel it's necessary to come along to point out the features of this train to Mr. Waterhouse. Features? What features? Uh, Mr. Waterhouse has been a railroad man for 50 years. 51. I think Mr. Waterhouse is capable of determining the condition of a train without your help. But now, wait a minute. Uh, Mr. Waterhouse does not need a nursemaid. Now, uh, you wait here till we get back. I know more about trains than he'll know if he lives to be 100. <laughs> Must we sit here? It's the most comfortable seat in the car, sir. The only one I can guarantee the springs won't pop out. <laughs> What's the matter, Sonny? You lost? Kate Bradley's responsible for this. Where is she? On the train. She is? I'd better get aboard. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I never heard anything so ridiculous in all my life. You never rode on such a ridiculous train in all your life. And <laughs> say I didn't warn you. <laughs> this may put a crimp in Charlie's pride, but maybe it'll keep food on the table. suggestion a few miles back that uh, Mr. Waterhouse thought was a good one. Thank you, sir. I thought it was a good one, too. Mm. Uh, you said you would signal the engineer to stop the train so uh, Mr. Waterhouse could see how the brakes worked. 
I sure did say that. Well, what is the matter with that engineer? Is he asleep? Uh, give him the signal again. He got the signal the first time. The brakes are on now. We skid pretty smooth, don't we? <laughs> Those brakes will take a hold just like that as soon as we hit the upgrade across the creek. Are you keeping a list of all these defects? I certainly am, sir. Do you hear what I hear? What is it, Kate? Listen. I think the cannonball's trying to tell us something. By golly, Kate, you're right. We're trying to tell you what? That another one of the wheels is out of whack. You see, Charlie heard it too. And by some miracle, he's managing to stop the train. We're lucky she's pulling up lame right at the shady rest. What well, I declare! What a fortunate coincidence! <laughs> You're such nice gentlemen. I'm sorry you had to get hooked on another one of Mr. Bedlow's sharp deals. Oh, nobody sharp deals, Mr. Waterhouse. Why, the condition of this train has made him very happy. <laughs> happy? His greatest joy is in repairing these antique locomotives. And this one is certainly in need of lots of repairs. Uh, Mr. Waterhouse will ride the cab back to Hooterville to inspect the engine. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, Ch Ch Charlie wouldn't try to bring her back in the condition. She's in it. It'd be too dangerous, wouldn't it, Floyd? Well... It'd take two or three hours to, to even get her where she could limp back. Isn't that right, Floyd? Well... But you're welcome to wait at Shady Rest. It's right up the hill from here. It is about time for your nap, sir. <laughs> one i nearly lost him now then you and charlie sneak off on your run to pixley and back i gotta have time to pierce that man's meanness you'll need an elephant gun to get through that hide mm, i got a hunch about that old saying they're no bad millionaires just bad stomachs <laughs> uncle joe get up the train's in looks like mom brought back a couple of guests Come on, Uncle Joe. Uh, just five minutes more, Mom. I promise to get to school on time. Oh, stop kidding, Uncle Joe. We have guests, honest. Well, well. Oh, yeah, well, there we are. Now, we can't exactly make you feel at home, but we can make you comfortable. Do you expect me to stay in this, this broken-down shack? What is that again, mister? Well, it isn't exactly a palace, but as they say, any port in a storm. Just a minute, Kate. We ain't so hard up, you have to humble yourself. Uncle Joe, please. Don't just Uncle Joe please me. I ain't standing by and seeing you insulted by a couple of cheap salesmen with just one itty-bitty sample case between them. This happens to be an attaché case. I don't care if you're selling attachés or electric guitars. Just be sure your broken-down partner here keeps a civil tongue in his head. Tell him to shut up. Please, gentlemen, if you would just step inside. Uh, like she says, sir, any port in a storm. Just a minute, buddy. I ain't heard you apologize to the young lady. Shh. You realize you were talking to Mr. Philip Waterhouse and his secretary? Kate, after all I've taught you about spotting phonies... Who ever heard of a man secretary? Lots of millionaires have men secretaries. Sure, million... Millionaire. Mr. Waterhouse is here to buy the cannonball. It's an antique. Let me handle it, Kate. I'll get us a good price for the train. But we can't sell something we don't own. Kate, we got a house full of antiques. Millionaires don't just stand around window shopping. They buy. But we don't want to sell anything. We just want to save the cannonball. Okay, okay, we'll save that to the last. Mr. Water Inch... <laughs> That'll mean canceling a lot of reservations But I can let you have the whole second floor, Mr. Waterich Mr. Waterhouse would like a room where he can take a short nap and wash up Your wash is my command <laughs> It's a little joke I thought you might enjoy Tell him we don't We don't After you get your 40 weeks, I'll show you our stock of antiques um, I, I hope Mr. Waterhouse has a nice nap. Oh, I'm sure he will. Come on, Cassidy. Uh, sir, I thought I would uh, stay down here for a moment and uh, go over these notes. Well, all right, but hurry. Yeah, hurry now. Mr. Waterich hasn't got all day. Waterhouse! <laughs> Why don't you take your notes into the dining room? You won't be disturbed in there. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. I'll, uh, 
I'll be fine right here. I'm going to go sit at the table, Mom. Uh, you're right. Perhaps I'll have uh, more privacy in the dining room. Uh, Billy! Yes, Mom? You're disturbing Mr. Cassidy. I know, but isn't it exciting? And he acts like a college man. <laughs> hey, Joe, you get the fixing for the chicken and dumplings. We gotta get going fast. And now to get Mr. Cassidy out of the way so I can have a nice long chat with Mr. Waterhouse when he wakes up. Here you are. Now get going. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, to borrow a cup of sugar from a neighbor. Could I uh, walk along with you? Well, I guess it'll be all right. Hey, where are the girls headed with that male secretary? To borrow a cup of sugar from one of our neighbors. Why well, our closest neighbor's five miles away. He's going to find that out. <laughs> hey, Kate, what happened to those price tags we had left over from the rummage sale? I'm going to make everything look like it's for sale. I'll mark it clearance, 40% off. Oh, Joe, please settle down and listen to me. Kate, this is no time for chit-chat. There's a rich man upstairs. Don't you know what it means to be this close to millions of dollars? Maybe billions. He's rich. Well, with all the genuine antiques we got around here, he needs us worse than we need him. Cassidy! Coming, Mr. Water Rich. He wants Cassidy. Who's Cassidy? His secretary. I'll go fetch him. <laughs> Kate, you can't keep millionaires waiting. Cassidy! Uncle Joe, uh, please find Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Waterhouse wants him. Well, he just went. <laughs> please hurry, Uncle Joe. Mr. Waterhouse, the poor old thing, is helpless without his secretary. Helpless, am I? Well, you can just tell Cassidy that I don't want to be disturbed. <laughs> it worked. Now, if I just have time to fix the chicken and dumplings, I'll be able to tame that lion. I never saw a lion. Your chicken couldn't turn into a lamb. <laughs> lion, chicken, lamb. That's pretty good, Betty Joe. And I'm only a teenager. <laughs> oh, but believe me, Mr. Travers, nothing can keep this sale from going through. Oh, they're out in a trial run now. When I get back... Oh, no, Mr. Travers, there's nobody on the train with him except Kate Bradley. Mr. Travis, Kate Bradley's no match for Mr. Waterhouse. The only way she can talk to him is through Cassidy. Nothing can happen. No. That's right. Well, goodbye, Mr. Travis. Ooh, better get out there right away. <laughs> Where's my secretary, Cassidy? Oh, he went for a walk, Mr. Waterich. House? Yeah, yeah, he went out of the house for a walk. Well, what am I supposed to do until he gets back? Well, you like antiques? Why don't you just browse around, see if you can find yourself a few bargains? You know how old this elevator is? 1822, figure it out. 1822? Well, that's remarkable. Uh, remarkable is hardly the name for it. The word is old, antique. No, the word is remarkable. 1822? Yeah, remarkable, ain't it? Yes, especially since the elevator wasn't invented until 1852. Which proves my point. <laughs> don't, don't, don't sit down there and break into a thousand pieces. Sure glad I wasn't sitting there when the Indian arrow hit. Remarkable, ain't it? Who was that? Oh, it's Phoebe and my minor bird. Sometimes I keep her in the elevator. Remarkable, remarkable. I've got to get out of this madhouse. Where's your phone? Phone? Oh, I get it. You're a sharp trader. You know a bargain when you see one. What are you talking about? Now, let's just lay our cards on the table. You want the phone, we'll make you a price. Hello. Operator. Operator. Now, let's stop playing games. Now, you know a phone that old wouldn't work. It worked once, though. There was only five words spoken into it. Quick, Watson. I need you. Anthony. Anthony. Can't you put a muscle on that minor bird? Yeah, gladly, but it'd be muzzling the beak of a 95-year-old minor bird. Cassidy, Cassidy! Oh. Now, you let me tell you something. So you're probably wondering about the chipped edges on that tray. Well, you know how it is when careless Indians shake ashes out of their peace pipes. <laughs> he hasn't got a chance. <laughs> Now I'm going to show you what I really think of your antiques. Well, of all things, how dare 
you break that ash tree? That's my personal property. It's all right, Kate. Mr. Waterridge was just having a little fun. Well, he's going to have a little more fun cleaning it up. What? You get down and clean up every one of those pieces. Kate, you can't talk that way to a millionaire. I can talk that way to a spoiled child, and that's what he is. Now, you listen to me. Yeah, you better listen to him. You shut up. You bet I will. You think you've been fooling me with your cheap schemes to keep me from buying that train? You can't fool him, Kate. He's brilliant. Don't you think I know why you sent Cassidy away? So you could cry on my shoulder with some sad story. Uh, he, he don't like sad stories. Hey, did you ever hear the... Shut one? up! <laughs> Listen to me. It's true, I schemed. But I could have staked my life that you had a spark of decency in you and that maybe somehow I could show you how important that train was to us. While to you, it's just another toy. But I guess I was mistaken in my judgment. You ought to be ashamed. My mother went to a lot of trouble making chicken and dumplings for you just so you'd listen to her side of the story. Oh, I get it. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach, huh? Why, that's the corniest trick of them all. You're right. I should have known you didn't have a heart to get through your stomach, too. Well, that doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, the nerve! Oh. And I'm going to keep this up until you get Cassidy back here. No, you're not. Oh, take it easy, kid. Now, you get on upstairs and go to your room. Just, Just a minute. I'm not old man. Until you promise to act like a grown up. Give it to him, Mom. Now, I'm going to lock you up there till you promise to hear me. Who is it? It's me, Kate Bradley. Well, open that door and make it snappy. Oh, you finally decided it was safer to let me out, huh? The only thing I decided was that even a cranky, crotchety old man can get hungry. Eat. I wouldn't eat your cooking if I was starving. Now, you eat everything on that plate to the last morsel. Or so help me. I'm going to turn you over my knee and spank the daylights out of you. And don't think I can't do it. <laughs> Want to stand there and watch me? I don't think that'll be necessary. <laughs> when you've finished eating, you'll find the price of the plate marked on the bottom. <laughs> I should have known you'd be able to handle it, but it could have saved me a 25-mile hike from Hooterville. Tell him to shut up. I'm thinking. <laughs> shut up. He's thinking. I heard. I heard. Does this mean we'll have to move? We'll talk about it later, honey. You know I'm a good mind to give him back that $50 he gave me for that stuff he broke. Hey, Joe, did you take money from him? If Mr. Waterhouse will sign these papers, we can all go back on his train. Mr. Waterhouse examined the train thoroughly. The engine is an 1891 Rogers. Yes, authentic in every detail. And Mr. Waterhouse is looking for an 1890 Porter. What? But you both... And tell that scoundrel Bedlow I may have him arrested for fraud. Good idea, sir. But Mr. Waterhouse, sir, Mr. Tell him to shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> well, we better get out of here before he tries to sell me the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> Bye, Mrs. Bradley. Goodbye, Mr. Waterhouse. Tell the others goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Did you hear that, Kate? We're still in business. How do you like that bed load? Trying to skin that nice millionaire. <laughs> I gotta learn to have more confidence in my first impressions.
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.